I don't think the Pakistanis would dare to uh, challenge us again. People across uh, are no longer a challenge for us. They were never a challenge. I have unforgettable memories as far as this is concerned and uh, I feel always proud of the armed forces, particularly the army, uh, which I was heading at that time. The manner in which, the way in which they uh, recaptured every bit of ground here and the manner in which they fought that war, uh, probably the most challenging in the world. Very proud of them and today that we have come here uh, I feel honored, blessed really, to be with the kin of the martyred soldiers, people who died, soldiers who died, and also to be with the award winners of Kargil War. So how much has the warfare changed from 1999 to at present? Uh, considerable. Is there is a transformational change. The human resource asset of the Indian Army is still the best in the world. Okay. It was in that time, it was today also. But what has changed major? is one that we have got much better equipment, much better arms, weapons, everything. And the third thing that I have noticed now lately is that we are also now more proactive than we were 24, 25 years ago. I think that's a great, uh, I would say, strategic change which is coming about. Last question, okay. would be, sir, last question would be, sir, how do you look at the situation uh, at the LOC? I, uh, how do you look at it, sir, overall? Look, the LOC situation, situation is well under control. Personally, I feel that I don't think the Pakistanis would dare to uh, challenge us again. And uh, we are now, um, we have adequate number of troops and we have got adequate strength to take on any challenge. You know, 1999, we fought this war the Kargil War, also known as Operation Vijay, um, you're all aware of it. Uh, in this war, there were huge challenges, you know. Um, the terrain is so difficult. Uh, with altitude ranging 14 to 18,000 feet, you can see this mountain all around. Uh, Sub-zero temperatures, uh, glaciated area, the wind chill factor, lack of oxygen. You know, walking up this mountain is so slow, you take, you know, 10 minutes to walk 100 meters, which is almost three times what you do on the planes. And this gets further compounded, you know, gets further slower when you're carrying your logistics, your weapons, your machine guns, your ammunition, that speed becomes uh, even slower. And therefore the requirement of acclimatization as well, you know, so therefore the speed of operations uh, reduces tremendously. Because troops have to be inducted, they have to acclimatize, then you have to build up your logistics. So that, uh, you know, really slowed down the operations. In, in some cases we inducted troops, for, like I can talk for myself, uh, we moved in without acclimatization, the advance party, because there was no time. We didn't want to give the enemy more time to settle down. And uh, so those were the huge challenges. So while the enemy was there, sitting on top, but before reaching the enemy, you know, we have to fight the weather, the climate, the terrain, the temperatures, and only then you could reach the enemy. The other biggest challenge was that, you know, he was sitting on top. So anybody sitting on top with a machine gun pointing at you, you know, going against the grain, the terrain totally favors the defender, you know, and, and that further, you know, was a huge challenge. Now in mountains here, especially these kind of mountains, the approaches along which you have to attack are very, very narrow and very, very limited. The approaches are so narrow that troops have to walk in a single file, you know, one after the other. You can't uh, launch attack, you know, in an extended manner, which you would like to do, but you're walking in a single file, and even on that, if you slip and fall, you know, it's certain death. 
and God forbid, if, a, if there's an enemy sitting on top with a machine gun pointing at you, you can imagine the challenges which our gallant soldiers faced. And against all these odds, still, we attacked, we did suffer casualties, but we captured, recaptured all these features, you know, one by one. Uh, is there any uh, memories or uh, anecdotes you want to share during that war, uh, which is etched to your memory and still you remember, like, uh, like it has just gone back? Yeah, so uh, while there are so many incidents, you know, loss of life, while, you know, when we captured, we had victory, there was periods of elation and joy, but there were many mo mo moments of, you know, um, uh, sadness and uh, deep emotions when we lost soldiers, you know, while we had uh, minimal casualties, but each and every casualty, you know, um, is a huge loss. Uh, one incident which I can never forget in my life is that when we were launching attack, you know, between 5140, and Tololing, the place called Hump, which you see here, uh, the place called Rocky Knob. So we were firing, we didn't get success initially, and uh, Alpha Company was to attack, Major Bhaskar was the company commander. Uh, we f wanted to fire rocket launchers in the air burst role, because the direct hit on these huge boulders there were not succeeding, succeeding. So I was standing, and there were rocket launchers, you know, on both sides, five, six of them. Right of me, there was Ranbir. He was firing a rocket launcher. You know, airburst. He fired a round and he looked at me and he told me, Sir, I'm a sniper. Hai. And uh, I will take him next. And he told his number two to, to load his rocket launcher again. When he was doing that, I was talking to him and I was telling him, Can you change your position? And because he has seen you, you know, you saw him, he's also seen you. Snipers are trained, they were a special services group, SSG, like a special forces. But it happened so fast that, you know, he told me, then he put his rocket launcher down, the number two loaded, and he stood up again. You know, standing just one feet to my right. And the moment he stood up, I was ready, and Ranbir got a bullet right here, and he fell down right in front of me. You know, one feet away from me, I saw him dying. And uh, that incident, you know, uh, I think I never forget in my life. Um, so these are the kind of incidents that we faced. And there, you know, artillery was firing all over, firing air bursts on top of us, and we were just keeping our fingers crossed. We had no overhead cover because we were, we were moving. And uh, it could be anybody at any time. It could have been me, actually, because I also peeped and saw the sniper, you know. But uh, fortunately for me and fortunately for Anbir, you know, that uh, he was the one who became the target. So, so these are the incidents that I can never forget in my life. 24 down the line, 24 years down the line. The, how much has the war game of the warfare has changed, basically, according to you? Because you have seen 1999 and you have been, you know the terrain so well. How much it has changed according to you? How do you respond to the present situation? So warfare is changing a lot in the sense that a lot of technology is coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, non-contact warfare is happening. China is doing that in a big way, you know, which is continuing actually. So uh, that is one is non-contact warfare uh, with, with, you know, no deni with deniability. You know, nobody knows who is doing what. And then the use of technology is coming up. These are two factors which are changing the, the way we go to fight. You know, we're seeing the Ukraine war happening, you know. Armor was being used uh, so much, but uh, the Russians did not succeed. So we'll have to keep a track on this and see how we change, how we fight for the future. Uh, and what are your thoughts upon the people across the LOC? People across uh, are no longer a challenge for us. They were never a challenge, actually. But now, much more, seeing their situation, you know, the economic situation, um, I'm aware, you know, of course I saw it in the media that this year the Pak Army even do, didn't do their uh, military exercises because there's no fuel for them. So in such a situation, uh, the, the uh, ex-chief General Bajwa has made statements, you know, which, which keep getting leaked out that, that they cannot fight the Indian Army. So that thing doesn't worry us at all.